Welcome to the Traditional Way Podcast brought to you by the Martial Arts Center Network and our sponsor, the K-Talk Nationals in New York City on November 24th. I am your host, Brett Shumway. Continue to support the network on our social media pages and like, share, and comment on all of our podcasts and programming. On this episode, I'm going to recap some of the happenings from the World Championships that just took place in Gisolo, Venice last month, and give you some of my thoughts on how things played out. So this is more of an editorial than and an opinion than, than actual facts, I would say. If you're looking for the results from, last, uh, from the tournament, you can watch last episode where I did cover all of the winners. But on this episode, I want a deeper dive on the event overall. Let's start with my biggest takeaway from the event, Kata Brackets. Now, the WKF has used these new brackets with the Repercage um, for the Youth League Series A and the Continental Championships. I am, for one, I'm not a fan. Right. Let's take a look of why. In the old way of doing kata, each pool ran and the top four advanced to the next round, eventually working down to two pools where the top one from each pool went on for the gold and the number two and three from each pool would face off for the two bronze medals. In this method, you knew how many rounds that you had and you could make a plan for on what kata that you would run, allowing you to start from the bottom and work your way up to your top forms from the lower pools onward. This for me presents the best opportunity to have basically the best overall division from a spectator standpoint, where the top athletes are running their best katas against each other. How it's working now, you may have to use one of your best forms early depending on who you have to go against uh, in the bracket, right? So let's take a look at how this played out for American Chian Issa uh, in Venice. So he wins his first round pretty easily, and then he goes on against uh, his next round is against the world number one. So he obviously has to run one of his top forms here. So he does, and he and he does squeak out a win, which is very good for him, right? Then in the next round, he has to go up against the competitor who ultimately wins the division, where he loses. He goes into the repertage where he wins the first round of that pool, and then loses his next match on his fifth kata to another. To be fair, another very top ranked athlete, world number top five ranked, right? Because of the way the bracket was for him, he couldn't repeat the kata that he used to get out of the second round until he would have uh, until the sixth round or when he would have made the bronze medal match if he would have done so. So essentially, he had to burn what may have been his best kata super early. This is a scenario that happens with this format, and luck of the draw at the world championship shouldn't determine who becomes the world championship the world champion, in my opinion. Right. So the other issue I have with this format is the only way to get into the repertage is to have lost to one of the two finalists in the division. So essentially, if you lose a match, you now need to cheer for that guy who just beat you to make it to the final, or you have no shot of going to the pools to compete for bronze. That just goes against ever, every fiber of my being of being a competitor, right? To hope that the person who just beat me wins so I can go for bronze. This is something that I, I'm not a fan of, and I wish they would go back to the elimination pools like they have done for so many years. I think overall it's a better format. Also, I want to discuss a topic that a lot of people think, but no one really wants to talk about out loud. And that is, are the Japanese kata competitors really that much better than everyone else? I feel that it's a fair question to ask. So at the World Championships, the Japanese took all the kata divisions except for one. And after watching the divisions, especially the finals, I'm not sure they should have won all the divisions they did. Look, let's be honest. Judging kata is completely subjective. So my question is, do these judges have a preconceived notion that the Japanese athletes are just better? I think maybe that's the case because I'm not seeing an absolute dominance of performances like the scores would suggest. I believe the top athletes from all over the world are pretty evenly matched and the scores should be a lot closer than we are seeing. Now, hopefully that changes in the future when these judges sit down to score because the organization will have a lot more athletes moving to com- to Kumite only if they feel that they don't have a shot against a, partic- a particular group of athletes, right? So lastly, I want to bring up Kumite Ippons. They have to be cleaned up, guys. Like, it does not make sense to me that an athlete has to, has to remain in a good stance throughout the technique on a punch or a body kick but can fall down while throwing a hook kick and get three points. Other fighting organizations that fight for points have corrected this. The WKF has to get on top of this as well. The judges should not be scoring hook kicks that are fading away to the ground. I think at the very least, the athlete should have to remain on his or her feet throughout the technique. 
But, you know, that's just a few takes on what I saw at the World Championships. And I hope as an organization, the WKF continues to work out these small kinks. And again, they're very small because overall, they're doing a great job on how they organize and carry out traditional tournaments. And I think they're probably one of the best in the world at doing that. But with that, guys, I want to thank you for tuning in to another episode of the Traditional Way Podcast and continue to support the Martial Arts Network, and we hope to see you at the K-Talk Nationals in New York City on November 24th. Join me on the next episode, where I will break down the final veterans rankings and preview the Karate World Cup. I will leave you guys with yet another look at this year's WKF Youth World Champions and how they got to the top of the podium. Till next time, guys.